Hey there, people, and welcome back to Who Wants to See Some Gone Home. I know I do. So, when we left off, uh, we found out more about Sam's friend Lonnie. Not a whole lot. We read this pretty awesome letter. Uh, hey, oh, that's the cassette case I brought from over there. Right. Is that foreshadowing of dark things to come? Maybe. So this room just is the lamp, no light switch. Stare. Okay, hang on. I can't really tell what it is. Was it stare and scrutinize? Okay. I don't know. If you can see what's supposed to be there, you know, post in the comments below what that's supposed Hey, is that a fly? Is that a fly? That's a fly. Tell me what that was supposed to be. Because, I don't know, I guess, I guess ain't nobody got time for that. As it were. Super Speed Fire! Ever remember that game? Love that game. That game's not real. And this is Journey of Crystal. Awesome. You took your Super Nintendo? Of that. Did you take your sick ass tape? Three ring binder. Why can't I even pick these up? Did you. What's this? Bratmobile Cool Schmool. I. We're so cool, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're so cool, cool. We're so cool, yeah, yeah. Fuck you, too. Cool, small. that is it's going off for now there just gently set that there unless do I get to okay Sam I think the creative writing track would be perfect for you Mrs. Bleach Mrs. Bleach read call it blah blah okay wait what was highlighted English creative writing okay plate ah uh, must be paper that's uh, the ginger ale, I believe. Yep. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm, nothing else. Oh. Button. The Misfits. Right on. Alright. I can get behind that. Uh. Her brush. Oh. There. I mean, I still can't see anything. Got some socks. That drawer's been totally pulled out. Did that fit there? Some Maybe that fit here? I, I don't know. I don't know. There we go. Grab Steggy. Stilly. Steggy. That's what it is. Steggy the Stegosaurus. Also, yes, I know I got the amazing amount of thunder for Steggy. The Brother 150. This is the one me and my dad are building. Wanna go for a ride when it's done? I'm gonna assume that's from Lonnie. The Brother 150. Of course it's Phaedrus, new for 1965. 
Grab fork. Throw fork. Open drawer. Close drawer. Open drawer again because I didn't mean to close drawer. Groove. Exclusive. AIDS in Africa. Soul Asylum Live. Eddie Vedder. Weezer. Veruca Salt wants it now. Max and Martin. Martin? Wanted for murder of Stage Edge. Straight Edge. Oh, Straight Edge. I heard... I, I was reading Stage Edge for some reason. I am... I am very good. Kirk Cobain. What a time... Maybe that's the wrong thing to say there. I was gonna say, what a time to be alive, but... Not really. Not really. Note? No, no. Get out of your jitters. You're not good soda. Samantha. Greenbrier. Eleven. You're eleven. Teacher, Fletcher, period, five. Subject, shop I? Hell, shop I? Oh, me metalworking, okay. Yeah, shop one. Great, C minus. No, not a challenging assignment. Metal plaque for family portrait. Reasonable subject. Uh, but not complex. When I said that mom and dad should be replaced with parents' names, I did not mean just add them underneath. Acceptable. Leveling on edges. Show more pride in work. How about you... Suck a dick. I want to believe. Oh, maybe she's recording the X-Files. That's also awesome. This is a, uh... This is a closet. Alright. Grab board game. Got your number. Are you going to the dance with anyone? Who's got a crush on you? That's it. That's Dream Phone. Well, that's cool. I can appreciate Dream Phone. The King's Labyrinth, Chapter 2, Fraying Threads, Captain Allegra. Captain Allegra, still in her flowing skirt and sturdy jerkin, descended the single shining thread into the lower cavern. Ooh, thunder. She and the first mate, on their own now, grew closer to their goal, the throne room of the dead immortal king of the island. The first mate slid down the line into the stone floor. She swept chalky bone dust from the front of her canvas trousers and looked up at Allegra. The silken thread, nigh unbreakable thanks to the enchanted moths that inhabited the island. Yeah, inhabited spell, right? Okay. Trailed behind, leading their way back to the entrance. From further into the labyrinth, a moaning began to echo. The moaning grew louder and clearer. It turned into words from some ancient language they could not understand. The king's cursed voice. Hairs on Captain Allegra's arms stood on end. She looked back at the blackness of the passage for a moment too long for noticing the captain's gaze. Okay, sorry. That's it's just that's written weird. Cause it's saying it's doing something from for Allegra, but then saying she looked back. At the first mate, who's out of me and locked the black... Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. I read it wrong. My apologies. I was confused for a second. The first mate nodded silently ahead. Following the king's ghostly song deeper and deeper into the labyrinth, they came upon a rocky gaps, billing forth otherworldly blue light. The great basin of the dead king's throne room lay below. Skeletal and rotted robes, King was hunched over the blue orb, topping his royal scepter. Shadows of his bony fingers danced on the walls like ghouls. As he sang, wailing souls flowed in, one by one, through the cracks in the cave walls, pulled into the orb, causing it to glow brighter and brighter. Behind the king, a long staircase, hewn from rock, led down into the chamber from a passage at the top. Allegra said, We have the advantage in numbers. I will draw his attention, and then you... But her first mate interrupted. What the hell voice did I get the first mate? I don't know. No! I am smaller and quicker! And you know of dealing with mystical energies like these. I will circle to the other side and get the king's attention. And then lead upon a merry chase. She held up the silken line, all traced by this invisible thread. Invincible, of course. Allegra said, "It is a good plan, but 
Perhaps we should go together. The first mate shook her head. You know this is our best chance. Don't be afraid for me. They grasped hands and exchanged three tight squeezes, their palms growing warm. The first mate tied the shining thread to the belt of her trousers, gave a quick salute and a wink, and dashed off. Allegra waited, staring vigilantly across the top of the stairs where the first mate was to appear. The king continued his... Wait, no. No! The singing stopped. The king turned and began walking up the stairs. Allegra wanted to call out, to do anything to stop the first mate from running headfirst into danger. She tried tugging on the line to signal her. No use. The king was nearly at the top of the stairs when the first mate burst through the passageway. She skidded to a stop, even from across the yawning basin. Allegra could see the first mate's eyes grow wide. She turned and ran, summoning his undead power. The king left the ground, levitating, gliding behind her with distressing speed. From some dank passage too far away, Allegra heard the first mate scream. <laughs> she was already running toward the sound. The line in Allegra's hand went taut, then shuddered. It fell slack to the stone floor. As Allegra ran, she was gathering the line. Twisting it around her arm, she came to its end. The unbreakable rip, the unbreakable thread dangled limply, its end shredded and frayed in her hand. She tossed it to the ground and ran. Ran! Ran! Shit, that actually got intense. God damn. I'm gonna have to go... I, <laughs> I want to know what voice I possibly left with the first mate before. And for some reason default to a very bad, uh... Bobcat for a second. Grab collar. Mitten. 1888 Dry Creek Road. Huh. Never quite heard the name Mitten for. Ma... Man. Sam had this in, like, fourth grade. Put it back. No. What is underneath? I must... Kick, I must keep digging. Oh, that actually went into my inventory? Did it? No. Another holy bibble. Sure. Okay. So far, I haven't learned a whole lot within the room. Alright. Uh, student name Yolanda DeSoto. Grade 12, blah, blah, blah. Mr. Bleach Benchley. Mr. Benchley observed Miss DeSoto wearing a t-shirt with an unacceptable image on the front. A large beer can labeled Pabst Blue Ribbon. Miss DeSoto was sent to the guidance counselor's office. Miss DeSoto... Actually, take my falcon. Miss DeSoto was given the option to turn her shirt inside out, change into a shirt from her gym locker, or be suspended for the rest of the day. Miss DeSoto chose suspension. Her father was called, but there was no answer and no answering machine. Miss DeSoto must return this form tomorrow, signed by her father. Administrator signature, student signature, Lonnie D. Oh, Lonnie is Yolanda. I get it. Okay. Does, does Lonnie have no parents? Did I throw that in there? The world may never know. Okay, it just comes out over here. Huh? Read note. Hey, Sam, do you want to see Pulp Fiction after school at the Coliseum? It came out last weekend, and Todd won't shut up about it, so either it's good or we can make fun of it for... make fun of him for liking it. My mom is supposed to cook dinner for us tonight for... tonight for a change, but I can just ditch out on it, probably. What time? Also, isn't that movie supposed to be really violent? Am I going to barf while I'm in the side of me, but... According to Todd... Wait, am I thinking... Yeah, I'm thinking the right movie. Royale with cheese. Uh, according to Todd, it's pretty hardcore, I guess. Uma Thurman gets stabbed in the heart with a heroin needle, so that's kind of hilarious. Also, something about cheeseburgers is important. Todd wants to see it again. 7.15, okay? Don't barf. <laughs> Alright, see you there. <laughs> Puking cheeseburger. Alright. Oh, what's this one? Danger! Wear goggles and rubber gloves when handling anything in this room. Oh shit, am I gonna die? 
Is this how I end? Oh, good, the bathroom. Let's just wait for water. Lonnie, rule! Is band baits? Ruin them. Uh, they polish. Right, and. Give me that. Cinnamon. Ugh, I don't think. I... No, that. There. Can't open the toilet, can I? No. Alright. Uh. We've got. Female products. Every four. Pretty sure that's. Yeah, Protex. There we go. What? Wait a minute. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, I'm a fucking child. Okay. Guess this one's broken. Alright then. Please tell me that's paint. Examine bottle. Wild color. Oh, okay, it's hair dye. I had, I had much darker thoughts about. Lonnie brought her hair dye over today. She said, "I need to fix these roots. Think you could help?" Dying hair is weirdly intimate. I don't know if I've touched someone else's scalp before. It's pretty intimate, right? It felt intimate. We looked into the mirror together after, and I expected her to say something about how it looked crappy, or good, or whatever. But that's when she said, You're so beautiful. And she was looking at me. Right in that moment, I wanted to say something, but I waited. And the moment was gone. Well, okay then. The story's coming together a little bit. I'm just gonna leave that as... Wait, 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 no. <laughs> anyway. Oh, oh. Hold on. And... Perfect. Okay. So now I have to get to the attic. So, my sister is gay, probably, or slowly realizing it. That's cool. That's all right. That's... What? No, really, what is this? Is this becoming a horror game and I never knew it was going to be a horror game? Katie, Mom and Dad were going to make up the guest room for you to stay in over the summer, but you came home on such short notice that they weren't around you can use my room if you want. I won't be needing it anymore, Sam. But... It, oh, this is the guest room and it's full of boxes. I see. Because there's nothing really in here. There is a lamp. There is a bed. Examine composition book. Samantha Greenbrier. Ghost Hunter Journal. Sightings Journal. A tall shadow in the upstairs hall. When I rounded the corner, no one was there. How tall was Uncle Oscar? Note, I was not wearing my glasses. <laughs> a faint voice coming from the bottom of the stairs. I said hello. Did not investigate. Probably was the furnace. Poured milk from carton in fridge. It was spoiled. Pretty sure I read that spirits can sour milk. Milk was just bought yesterday. Moo oh. Also ghost milk. Oh. <laughs> this is silly, I like it. Lonnie says she feels a pressure in the TV room. I suddenly begin to feel cold. We build a protective pillow for it. Uh, Lonnie and I employ Ouija board as a medium. Disturbing messages are conveyed from the other side. Oscar is definitely here. Enlisted Lonnie to stay up all night and help patrol premises, recording any signs of otherworldly presence. Lonnie reported many sightings, but all remained unconfirmed. Possible ectoplasm in the probably leaky roof. Sample taken just in case. Despite 
due to our best efforts, we both fell asleep around 4 a.m. All in all, a successful night. That's, that's awesome. Hey, Sam! You were asking what I wrote. Oh, wait. Was it? What? My... What my something ribbons meant. Here's a handy... Here's a handy guide. This one... Orienteering. This means the army thinks I can find my way around. Rifle team. The army has branded me as a certified killing machine. And adventure training. I am a burn... Jesus. Okay. I am a born adventurous. And no borders can hold me. The army recognizes this. So if you didn't think it was cool before, now you do. Lonnie D. Right on. Sliding door. That box probably said Katie at the... Oh, yeah. It's actually the exact same K, pretty much. Okay. Don't think there's anything jammed in here. No, okay, just wanted to be sure. So is Sam leaving because the house is supposedly haunted? Is she leaving because her parents won't accept the fact that she is a lesbian? Or, like, coming into it? Who knows? I, I want to know. I, I, I want to know. What's this? Heavens to Betsy, nothing can stop me. Is there... Probably have to take this to another room. Oh. Right on. That can't mean good things. soundtrack. I mean, a look. Because I have to say, I actually do dig these tunes. Halloween show! The Misfits, they're awesome! Don't forget your costume! Stygian Lounge, 10 29, so October 29th is before Halloween. It's a Halloween thing. It says at the top. Uh, see you there! L. Lani. Sometimes you just have to lie to mom and dad. Like when Lonnie asked me to see a band with her and stay over at her friend's place in the city after. That's a lie to mom and dad's situation. But it was so worth it. The girls on stage were just so loud and real and awesome. And everybody was moving together like one huge tide of sound. Between two songs, Lonnie leaned over and said, How do you like your first show? I was so happy. I felt tears starting in my eyes, and then she up and hugged me. I think she could tell. Well, that's awesome. Also, feel a little bad for giving the first mate two ridiculous voices, and the most recent being, <laughs> being Bobcat, of all people. But anyway, I digress. Awesome that she's like, you know, into the story that She's been writing about it since she was in second grade, if I remembered that properly. Healthy choices. Skills for a healthful life. Aha. Uh -huh. Is there a, uh... No. No, no. Oh, wait. Wait. No, no garbage can in here either. Fine. I can go there. I can go there and I can like it. Right, examine map. Lonnie, holy crap, I was in the library and I noticed something in the corner and I found a secret passage and it hid it had Oscar's creepy old stuff in it. Oh my god, I have to see this. We're skipping sixth. There's a secret room in my house from the possibly psycho uncle. Marked on the map. So it's in the room beside mom and dad's room. Okay. Pick up cassette case. 
Oh, this is the heaven, heavens to Betsy. Okay. Uh, all right. I guess I'll, well, I still have to check out some other rooms up here. But, yeah, I'm, I'm all for the secret room. Pop that back in. Sam's Dark Room, do not enter if red lights are on. Alright, well, I will come back to that then. This would be Mom and Dad's room, I imagine. Okay. So, would it be this room down here? That would have the secret passage? No. Uh, that's to the downstairs. Am I just totally reading this wrong? Because Sam's room is down there. Oh, it's in the room off of Mom and Dad's bedroom. I get it. Okay. Wait. I think I want in there. Part. What a party. Haven't had such a... Haven't had that much to drink, Jody Foster. How many fingers am I holding up? You better not have been reading my secret diary again. Uh... Here you go, Mitten. Have some pate. Gross. Meow. Sure. Uh, I thought I read something about her... Combination somewhere. Not in here. Uh, well, this is mom and dad's room. Hang on. Nothing. 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 Nope. 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 Wait. Condom? Oh, barf. You're like 20. Although that is in your parents' drawer, so. Yeah, sure, I can, I can get behind Obar from that situation. Nothing, okay. Alright then, uh... Click. Grab postcard. Dear Mom, Dad, and Sam, I am in the channel? The fuck's a channel? This is my second passage through the channel. No, seriously, I'm going to have to look up after this episode. What is a channel? I'm on my way back from London, this time going to Brussels, Belgium. Sorry I didn't write you on the way to Lincoln. Lincoln? London. But I was too excited about the channel. The fuck's a channel? London was great. Dad, I know you've always wanted to visit, and I think you really should. You'd love it. If you all wanted to come back as a family sometime, I guess I could be convinced. Love you all, Katie. Mom, Dad, Sam, Arbor Hill, blah, blah, blah. Put it back. Alright. Wait, wait, wait. Let me look, let me look. Yeah, it's 95. Why do we have so many phone books? Mm -hmm. I don't know. No. Eh, eh. Ah. There you go. Now you fit. Oh, look. Yeah. Ah. Sure, good enough. Anything else in here? Not particularly. Okay. Where did everyone go, though? That's what's up. No, nothing has anything hooked. Like, did she take all the electronics to sell? Or something for money since she's, like, running away from home? Is that what I'm supposed to take out all this? Butch Cassidy, all the President's Men. Oh, what else we got? Bridge on the River, Kiwa, Silence of the Lambs. Alright, so one of those tapes I would watch. Okay, what else we got? Uh, looks like someone, looks like the place was left in a hurry besides the fact that it's locked. Like even my parents' stuff. Mitten. Mitten, our cat, drawn by Caitlin at age five. Not mittens, mitten. 
Sure. Okay, so I am going to look in this drawer. I ain't going to read that yet. I'm going to cut this one off here and we will pick it up in the next one. Good God! What they do to Mom's face? Jesus! Actually, Dad's not looking so hot either. Jesus Christ. Anyway, if you like me saw you today, go ahead and like it. If you didn't like it, hey, that's not the worst thing in the world. Throw me some comments, all that good stuff, and I will catch up with you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.